1.9 Special ICF Installation This chapter of the manual explains some advanced installation technique and special flooring systems used with ANVIC ICFs. The most common special installations are included. However, if you have a site-specific situation that is not mentioned here, please contact us for assistance. Short Corner Construction Short corners, notches or bump outs, are commonly found in residential construction. Depending on the plan dimensions, AMVIC 90-degree forms can be used or a special corner detail can be constructed from straight blocks. Short corners using 90-degree corner blocks with a stack joint. A short corner can be constructed using at least two 90-degree corner blocks. Refer to Appendix C for minimum corner dimensions using this method. Here are the recommended steps. Install the first course so that the legs on both blocks are adjoining. Install second and consecutive courses of corner blocks in the same manner without alternating forms. This will create a stack joint. Ensure that the stack joint is adequately braced on both sides of forms and at every course. Failure to brace a stack joint adequately may lead to a blowout during the concrete pour. Make sure to use additional bracing if necessary. Short corners using 90 degree corner blocks with running bond pattern. This method also involves at least two 90-degree corner blocks. Refer to Appendix C for minimum corner dimensions using this method. Here are the recommended steps. Install the first course so that the long leg of one corner block and the short leg from the other block are adjoining. Install the second and consecutive courses by alternating the forms to create a running bond pattern. Short corners made of straight AMVIC ICF. Corners shorter than the minimum allowed by our 90-degree blocks can be achieved by using straight AMVIC ICFs. Steps in creating a custom short corner. To begin, you will need a minimum of two straight AMVIC forms. Cut off 4, 6, 8, or 10 inches, depending on which block you are using from one foam panel on each straight block at the edge of the form. Set the forms in place and glue the cutoff pieces to fill the ends of the forms to create a 90-degree corner. Construct two 90-degree wood forms made of 2 by 10 and place them on each of the formed EPS corners. Drill a half-inch hole through the wood forms and the EPS panels starting about 12 inches from footing or slab on grade. Insert a 3 8 inch threaded rod through the holes in the wood forms. Use plate washers and nuts on both sides to hold the rod securely. Continue to cut and stack the blocks to the desired wall height. Place the threaded bolts approximately 16 inches on center vertically. When the concrete has been poured and has set for a few hours, remove the wooden forms and cut the threaded rod so that it is flush with the concrete surface. Use foam adhesive to fill the holes in the EPS panels. Radius Wall Construction AMVIC manufacturing facilities provide pre-cut radius forms which ensure that courses fit together easily and installation goes smoothly with minimal labor costs. Pre-cut radius forms are tongue and groove cut on the inside EPS panel and slit cut on the outside EPS panel. Radius forms can also be constructed by the contractor on site using straight AMVIC ICF. Installing radius forms. On the footing slab on grade, set a template or guide board to match the desired radius. Apply a bead of spray foam to the bottom of the form along the tongue and groove cut for pre-cut forms. Bend the form into shape and install it. After laying the first course, install the horizontal rebar as per engineering requirements and or local building codes. Support the outside of the form using bracing or plumber's pipe strapping. Brace the wall adequately before pouring the concrete. For contractors who opt to cut the ICF on site, please refer to figures 9.13 and 9.14 as well as tables 9.1 and 9.2 for information on radius dimensions and cutting blocks. T-wall construction. T-walls require special attention before the concrete pour. Proper bracing and alignment are essential. Constructing T-walls. Locate the T-wall intersection as you lay the first course. Cut the AMVIC blocks appropriately and butt them together to form the T-intersection. Use zip ties or the equivalent to secure the blocks together. Install horizontal reinforcing steel bars, including bent 90-degree corner bars, with proper lap splice length as per engineering requirements and or local building code. Continue stacking subsequent courses of block until the full wall height is achieved. Check walls for level. If the walls are level, run a bead of spray foam down along each side of the forms on the T-wall. For below grade and main floor level walls, Additional bracing must be installed on the exterior side of the intersection. Failure to brace properly may cause a blowout during the concrete pour. For above grade levels, where there is no ground surface to anchor the exterior bracing, insert wire ties, or the equivalent, through the forms around each side of the intersecting T-walls. Do not tighten the zip ties yet. 
Once the wall is formed to the desired height, slide a 2x6 down the back side of the wall that runs straight through in between the forms and the tie wire. Tighten the wire tie to hold the lumber in place. Make sure the wire ties are installed at every course. Always use caution when pouring concrete into T-wall sections. Brick Ledge Applications A brick ledge is usually required to support the gravity loads of exterior masonry applications, such as brick, natural stone veneer, or any other exterior which cannot be supported by screwing into the AMVIC block webs. AMVIC has three brick ledge forms available. These are installed in exactly the same manner as straight blocks and provide the space and structural support needed for your exterior brick veneer application. Alternatively, the brick ledge forms can be used with the ledge support on the interior side of the building to provide support for flooring systems such as wood joists or steel joists. The main reinforcing steel stirrups for AMVIC brick ledge forms should be designed to requirements outlined by a local licensed engineer and or governing building code. Proper stirrup size and spacing is essential for the structural performance of the brick ledge. Installing AMVIC brick ledge blocks. AMVIC brick ledge forms are specifically designed so that they can be installed as a complete course at the required level just like straight forms. They feature a notch to place the horizontal stirrup hanger on which the main steel stirrups are attached and anchored. Custom design brick ledge forms. It is possible to build brick ledge forms if shop drawings and structural design requires a different design and profile than provided by the AMVIC brick ledge form. Custom forms can be shaped using light gauge sheet metal or wood. Here's a brief outline of the installation procedure. Use regular AMVIC straight ICF blocks as normal. As per shop drawing details, cut out the EPS between the block webs at the correct elevation. Pre-bend the main steel stirrups for the brick ledge design as per the engineering requirements and install in place. Attach the custom brick ledge form to the AMVIC straight forms using sheet metal strapping and screwing above and below the brick ledge at preferably 12 inch on center. Installing standard brick veneer. Whether you've used the AMVIC brick ledge forms or custom-made forms, standard brick veneer can be installed in the same manner as regular construction bearing on the ledge support. Following building code requirements for typical flashing details with dripping edge and minimum airspace, standard brick ties are screwed into the AMVIC webs. Horizontal and vertical spacing of the brick ties are to be determined by the engineering requirements. Gable ends. Gable ends can be formed using one of the two methods. Stepping forms. Form the gable end by stepping the forms back as you stack to the peak. Block off the vertical ends of the forms and pour concrete. After the pour, the rest of the wall is framed in. Cutting the forms. Form the gable end by cutting the forms to the appropriate slope of the roof. Secure lumber to each side of the forms so the top of the lumber is aligned with the top of the forms. This gives added form support and provides a furring surface to fasten plywood. Cap off the top of the forms if necessary. Precast concrete floor systems, hollow core spancrete. Hollow core slabs are a widely used flooring system, consisting of precast elements in which tubular cores are hollowed out. The elements are typically four feet wide and made of high quality concrete. These are reinforced by pre-stressed strands in the spanning direction only, which results in a very economical production process. Engineering is required for this floor system. Installing a precast floor system. Terminate the concrete wall at the desired height. Set dowel bars as per slab manufacturer design and engineering. Install the precast slabs after the walls have gained enough strength. Pour the floor topping. Hambro Composite Concrete Floors The Hambro flooring system consists of proprietary open web steel joists. The joists are shaped in a truss with a special top cord and are supported from wall to wall with a typical spacing of 4 and 1 quarter feet. Concrete is poured on plywood sheets that are supported by the hambro joists. When the concrete has gained enough strength, the plywood sheets are stripped off and are reused on other floors. Installing the hambro floor on AMVIC ICF walls. Pour the concrete into the AMVIC ICF wall to the underside of the concrete slab. Wet set dowels connecting concrete slab to walls as per engineering requirements. When the concrete has gained adequate strength, install the Hambro flooring system including steel joists, plywood sheets, roll bars, and steel reinforcement as recommended by Hambro Technical and or the engineering manual. Refer to HambroSystems.com for technical engineering information. Composite steel deck. Composite steel decks are made from plain or galvanized steel sheet rolled into rib profiles. The ribs are typically 3 inches deep and 6 inches wide and spaced at 12 inches on center. The steel deck can be used strictly as a formwork for concrete or it can be fabricated to bond with concrete and act together to form a composite section. 
For composite deck, no additional reinforcement is typically used. When non-composite deck is used, reinforcing steel bars are placed in the slab. Generally, 2 to 3 inches of concrete is placed over the ribbed deck to form a total slab thickness of 5 to 6 inches. Installing composite steel deck with Envic ICF. Pour concrete into the Envic ICF walls to the underside of the concrete slab. Wet set dowels to connecting concrete slab to walls as per engineering requirements. When the concrete has gained adequate strength, install the steel decking and reinforcing steel as per the manufacturer's technical engineering manual or as specified by a local licensed engineer. Pour concrete for the composite steel deck. The MDEC Floor and Roof System The MDEC Floor and Roof System consists of modular, expanded polystyrene forms. When installed, the EPS forms provide a stay-in-place formwork to construct one-way concrete pan joist floors or roofs. The system utilizes 10-inch deep light gauge steel framing studs to carry temporary construction loads until concrete has been poured and gained adequate strength. The light gauge steel joists also act as furring strips to attach ceiling interior finish, such as sheetrock. Please refer to our separate technical manual for installation guidelines and engineering details.